You're welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I'm Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heaven's is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E.A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary intends to bring insight to God's Word, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Wednesday, the 7th day of February 2024, and our topic for today is asking, Whose child are you? Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We are grateful for the privilege to be alive and to be gathered at your feet again. We have never come before you and gone back the same. We ask that today you would yet speak your word to us again, until we are changed and transformed to look more like you In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Matthew 7 verse 20 reads, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter 7 verse 20. Our text for today is from the same book of Matthew chapter 7. We will be reading now from verse 16 to verse 20. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 16 to 20 reads, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thongs, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Matthew chapter 7 from verse 16 to verse 20. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today once more is asking whose child are you? And in the body of today's devotional, our Father and the Lord says to us that John chapter 1 verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He tells us today that if you have received Christ into your heart and you believe in his name, not just in word, but in deeds such that everyone around you can see from your lifestyle that you are a believer in Christ, then you qualify to be called a child of God. On the other hand, the Bible says that the devil has his own children too. Jesus Christ was addressing the Pharisees and he said to them in John chapter 8 verse 44, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. The question then is, How do we tell a child of God apart from a child of the devil? The Bible answers this question aptly. For example, the Bible says that people who love the world do not have the love of God in them. 1 John 2 verse 15 to 16. This clearly implies that such people cannot be described as God's children. When you see someone who loves material things more than God, that fellow does not have the love of God in him and hence cannot be his child if he or she remains in that state. A child of God on the other hand is one who is born of the spirit and focuses on spiritual things rather than worldly things. John chapter 3 verse 3 to 7 says that anyone who wants to enter into the kingdom of God must be born of the spirit and of course only the children of God can enter into his kingdom. This is why you must be born again. Beloved, when you are born again, you are born of the Spirit and you truly become a child of God. When you are born of the Spirit, you will begin to live by the Spirit and be led by Him. You will begin to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit as written in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. Remember, it is the kind of fruit you produce that will determine who your father truly is. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Our topic for today once more is asking whose child are you? 
you would agree with me that if this question is to be asked randomly, almost everyone who would be asked would claim to be a child of God. Some may want to remind you how many years they have been Christians. Others may want to tell you how much of good works they may have been doing, how nice and how kind they are, and maybe also how sanctimonious they look. At the beginning of our study for today, our Father and the Lord reads from John chapter 1 verse 12, which says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So many of us believe that we become sons of God the moment we confess our Lord Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, irrespective of what follows afterwards. This is not true. Receiving Christ goes beyond the confession that we make. It is actually living that lifestyle that agrees with that confession. It is our submission in totality to Christ. It is those who have received him this way that he gives the power to become the sons of God. Our Father and the Lord tells us today that it is not just in words but in deeds such that everyone around you can see from your lifestyle without pretense that you are a believer in Christ. As we talk about being sons of God today, do not forget also that we are told in today's study that the enemy, the devil, also has his own children too. He has those who belong to him and there is a clear distinction between children of God and those who are of the devil. From this study, we can see that it is easy to tell whose child a person is. Our memory verse for today from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 20 reads, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. I want to believe that many of us have had the privilege of seeing trees grow. And for fruit bearing trees, most times when the fruits are out, you can hardly confuse them for something else. An apple tree for example would always be known to be an apple tree and it would have apples on it as fruits. An orange tree would always have orange on it. You cannot find mangoes on an orange tree for example. And the fruits which we can see externally on the tree is a result of what happens within the tree. Personally I know of a mango tree that has quite nice leaves. However, when it is time to produce fruits, you would notice that the leaves begin to have some white things on them. The fruits of this mango tree are usually quite large. However, most times they are not edible and even before it is ripe for consumption, they begin to get rotten. The tree is sick and so are the fruits too because they are fruits of that same tree. When a person's life produces certain kinds of fruits, you can tell where they belong. When you love the things of the world, when you prioritize profit and gain and acquiring things at all costs even above your love for God, then you need to check whose child you truly are. When the things of God do not interest you, when you feel as though you have your own freedom and the laws of God begin to feel like they are burdensome to you. When you are no longer led by his spirit but you are now led by your own desires. When like Lot, you are being led by your instincts, you are led by physical appearance or maybe your number of years of experience, then you need to watch it. Scripture tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 14 that for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The sons of God cannot do anything outside or without the Spirit of God. He is their chairman, the chief executive, the one in charge of the steering wheel of their lives. They turn in the direction of wherever he leads them to. Hallelujah! Sons of God have their own will crucified to that of Christ. Their desires, their appetites are all crucified to Christ. In our study to their Father and the Lord tells us that when you are born of the Spirit, you will begin to live by the Spirit and be led by Him. Are you God's child? Then let Him lead you. Life is truly easier that way. Scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 and 6 to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. It says to not lean onto our own understanding. It says in all of our ways we should acknowledge Him and He shall direct our paths. 
when he leads and directs you, you can have the assurance of a safe future. You can be sure of getting your goal and arriving at your destination. Your life also will be full of enviable fruits, hallelujah, fruits of joy, peace and all the beautiful fruits that the Spirit of God brings, hallelujah. I would like us at this point to bow our heads and just tell the Lord, Father, I surrender to you. Lead me by your Spirit. Ask the Lord today, say, Father, come and have your way in my life. Tell the Spirit of God, say, come and move within me. Come and lead me. Come and take the wheels of my life. Let me walk under your leadership. Let me walk under your instructions. Let me follow your own plans for me. As we surrender to the Lord today, why not also ask the Lord, say, Father, please let my life also produce good fruits in the name of Jesus. Let my life be fruitful. Let my life produce results. Also ask the Lord today, say, Father, from this day moving forward, please help me to love the things that you love. Help my heart to be fixed on the things of the Spirit. Help me also, O Lord, to truly receive you into my heart and into my life. Your word tells us that, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become sons of God. Lord, help me not just to receive you by lip service, by confession alone. Let my life exemplify truly that I belong to you. Begin to appreciate the name of the Lord and bring your prayers to a close. Our Father, we worship and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our dear Redeemer, we thank you because we are your children. Thank you because our lives produce fruits as expected of us, your children. We ask that from this day moving forward, you would help the love for the things of the world and all that is in it to die a natural death in our lives. Let our hearts be fixed on you and you alone and let our lives produce tangible fruits to your glory so we look more and more like you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have a reflection in today's study that asks us, check your character. Who does it mirror? That of the Holy Spirit or that of the devil? We receive the grace today to mirror Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Numbers chapter 1 down to chapter 2. We also want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, Please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 13 of our Open Heavens devotional. We would be singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. Have a remarkably blessed day ahead. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. We love you and bye for now.
I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.